It's uh, T minus 90 minutes until curtains up on the first Press Presents event. Really excited, we've got all of our speakers backstage in the green room. All of us speakers are going to be talking about how to motivate yourself, how to have better work life, how to have better life work balance. I'm a little bit nervous to be host in the evening, hope I don't uh, mess it up. Okay, see you on the other side. So next up, um, my stand-in guests um, called up about 24 hours ago. Max and Tom Evans um, both had incredible top flight careers in international rugby. Uh, Tom was also in a boy band before that. That's maybe, it is on YouTube somewhere. Um, toured with Westlife. Um, and Max ended up playing 13 years for Scotland. Uh, Tom played a slightly shorter career and he'll talk to you about that. So come on stage, like to find out about how you stay motivated in one of the more intense environments in the world. Please. I've done something that's extremely One, foolish, two, which is to sit next to the Evans brothers in front of a crowd. Uh, I'll keep my distance. You guys played at the top level in your field. Um, Tom, you had a, a fairly big interruption to that career. It'd be cool to hear about how that was, what happened. I think the audience would like to know what happened. And then it'd be really interesting to hear how you dealt with that. And we'll ask some questions, if that works. Thank you, Ed. And it's great to be here. Um, even though we weren't first choice. Um, <laughs> it's to fill in. Uh, as Ed said, both me and Max used to play for Scotland. Um, I think from an early age, we both knew it was going to be something to do with sport. Um, and then in 2010, playing against Wales in the Six Nations, we started off really well. We were leading, which for Scotland is unheard of. And, uh, and we were both having good games. And then I actually took... Uh, like an accidental elbow to my lip, and um, it needed um, immediate sort of attention. I think I required like 12 stitches. I went off, and I remember the surgeon was rushing to get me back on because we were leading, and uh, it was actually also um, Valentine's Day the next day, and I remember being like, mate, look, just do like a fairly good job. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I can see the scar from here. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I, I came back on and um, immediately got the ball. And, uh, you know, I was taught from an early age, even if you're carrying an injury, just, you know, block it out of your mind. Because the moment you think about it, you'll, you'll get injured. So I remember I ran through two Welsh defenders and came up against the fullback. Um, and for some reason, and it was, it was something I would never do, I, I put my head sort of in a in a funny position going into contact. And just right there and then, it was this feeling I'd never experienced before. Um, the best way I can describe it, it was almost like a, like a fuse going off uh, in your body. Um, no sensation. I remember I, I spilled the ball and in my head wanted to retrieve it, but just had no s sensation to do so. A few of the guys were, were straight in and they would like, look, just to stay still. And as rugby players were taught to, you know, <laughs> listen, and, uh, and, and I did so, and I was handled extremely well, and, um, but I'd, I'd, had, I'd suffered a, a double... So what, what had you done? Yeah, it's a double fractured dislocation uh, to my spine in the, in the C5 to C7 section, which is usually like a no-go. Um, but, you know, I was rushed, rushed to hospital within three hours and uh, had two miracle operations. So you went from being in the newspaper on a weekly basis and you guys being sort of these kind of leading lights in Scottish rugby and international rugby. Um, how, what was the next six months like? It was obviously yeah, extremely tough because uh, I've always been, we've, we've always been very active. And, uh, you know, there was, there was a, a point before my operation that, I, you know, I was probably not going to walk again. So... Um, there were so many mixed emotions going around in my head. Obviously, all my family were there. Max actually came to the, um, you know, to the ward where I was before I was going in. And uh, it, it was, it, like you said, crazy. Got one minute running out there for an international rugby game full of health. The next having um, like my, clothes, like my clothes cut off me, thinking that I, might, I, I may never walk again. Um, 
it's really weird even talking about it now because it uh, takes me back there. But uh, yeah, as I said, I was extremely lucky. And uh, the moment I came around after the second operation, um, it was quite evident that I was, you know, going to walk again. And for, for me, that was just the best possible news I could have asked for. So at that point, did you think, what next? Or did you think, I can walk and that's enough? Uh, I think, yeah, the latter. I was just so grateful um, to know that I would walk again and uh, anything else um, didn't really even enter my mind. I mean, just the fact that I was sort of had my health back and, um, and I was going to recover was enough for me. Okay, we'll come back to you and what you did next. So, Max, um, as eldest brother, at what point um, did you want to be a professional rugby player? How did you guys, How did you start on that journey? Um, yeah, I, I, I'll never forget this. Um, it's kind of a crazy story, but a true story. Um, so bear with me. I was a 13-year-old kid, and uh, I was lucky enough to get invited out to Hong Kong um, by a schoolmate. Um, good friend to have. And uh, we, he took me to the Hong Kong Sevens, which, for, for those of you who don't know rugby, um, is the pinnacle of uh, international rugby sevens tournament. Um, and at this tournament, uh, all the players do what's called um, a player's parade, where they all uh, walk around the field. And our, our mum is a South African. And so at the time, I was a massive South African uh, rugby fan. So I had a South African rugby jersey on. Uh, so when the South African team were walking around, uh, I was going absolutely nuts. I was like screaming. I had my autograph book. I was like, ah, and um, one of the players came over and he didn't just sign my autograph book. He actually wrote a quote and he said, believe in your dreams and they will come true. And this was like the coolest thing for me. I thought that's what I want to be. I want to be so good at sport that I can like inspire a kid. You know, I can inspire people. And actually, uh, in 2007, I got selected for the, the Scotland team to play in the Hong Kong Sevens. And during my players' parade, there was a Scotland kid in a Scotland jersey screaming, you know, for the players. And I went over, and I didn't just sign my signature. I signed, believe in your dreams, and they all come true. So it was kind of a cool thing. God, <laughs> It is so unpleasant to sit next to these two. That's not true story. True, true story. <laughs> it never is. happens. So, what's been your hardest moment? Like, how do you do? You did 13 years at professional, top level rugby, extremely competitive sport. Injuries all the way through. How do you keep training? Like, well, the hardest moment for me was just being so helpless through Tom's injury, and having to carry on a career that we both like loved. Um, was by far the hardest. I actually had to play a game the weekend after his injury. Um, and I was so sick before the game. But the coach, you know, he was, he was like, Adam, he was like, you've got to get back out there. It would be the best thing. And it was because I played in the game. And at the end of the game, I scored a try. And I, I did this initial T for Tom because Tom was still in the hospital. And, and it was a sign for me that, like, that's what I should be doing because, you know, I, I was carrying on playing for us. Like, that's what I would have wanted. You know, if I was in Tom's shoes, I would have wanted him to carry on and keep nailing it. So that was by far the hardest thing, you know, seeing him having his career, what he loved doing, cut. Um, I don't feel like that now because if you look at the state of him no. and you know, <laughs> how well he does with the, uh, with the ladies, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> There's nothing to feel sorry for. Ev him evidently about. not. That's why I'm single. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah. So that was the hardest moment uh, by far. <laughs> I regret this decision <laughs> so much. Yeah. You could have just picked someone off the street. Max, what do you think's been the key to your success? I mean, maybe both of you, but you you know, in your career. Yeah, I um, just before my rugby career took off, um, I was given a book called uh, The Secret. It basically talks about the law of attraction and that if you want something enough um, and you believe you can achieve it, then, then you will. But it tells you to do a vision board. And I did a vision board, like I said, before my rugby career took off. And I had six things down there. I had um, be the, the, the starting 13 for the Glasgow Warriors, which is the club I'd signed for. 
I had Play for Scotland with Tom, Play for the Lions which, with Tom. Um, uh, it, it gives you like a blank check where you can put in a figure of, I don't know, what you, what you want to get paid at work or for me, I put in a figure of what, what my dream contract would be, you know, what I would want to get paid as a contract. Over the course of my rugby career, all except one of these um, visions or dreams um, came true. And the only one that didn't come uh, was playing for the Lions, which Tom and I were so close to getting. Um, uh, but yeah, I can't speak highly of, you know, that kind of philosophy. And I genuinely believe, like, if you do really believe you can get something and really achieve something and you, you know, you think about it every day, you, you almost, you almost feel like you're already, you were already there, you've already got it, like, you know. Um, well, I, I yeah. even remember the dreams he selected, sort of seeing them on this, on this vision board of his and being like, like, bro, like, I love you, but that's a bit too extreme. Like, as in, <laughs> like, you're, you're talented, but at least strive for something that's achievable. I remember, we had that conversation, yeah, yeah. didn't we? And then he's right, like, everything came, came true. So obviously I started to do it. And, uh, yeah. so, and now you're winning. I'm wrong again, <laughs> as younger brother. <laughs> Um, okay, what's next for you guys? So Max is now, you've retired, right? Yeah. Um, you're back from France here. Um, what are you guys up to? What's going on? Yeah, we, um, well, me personally, I've been enjoying, I've been not working for like a year. I've been enjoying not getting beat up every weekend. And, um, <laughs> and Tommy and I, like Tom's done so well in terms of on the entertainment side, the modeling side. I mean, he's been on, one of our childhood dreams was to be on the cover of Men's Health. Um, and he's been on it twice, so right. like, share the love. <laughs> share the love, bro, Jesus, but I, twice, but I, come on. But I actually, like, as in, obviously when I, my career finished, nothing was planned, um, and I didn't know what I was gonna do, but um, just, just a quick story of, like, when I came to in, in the hospital, I was obviously feeling very sorry for myself. There was a lovely girl next to me called Kathy, and she was a local girl, 13 years old, um, had been riding a bike, uh, in a small village outside of Cardiff one day and was a victim of a hit and run, uh, was paralyzed from the waist down and I had to share a bed next to her for I think four weeks it was and every day I would wake up next to her and, and see her come to terms with the realization that she would never walk again and I honestly like the thing I said to myself from that moment on is no matter what I do in life I'm just going to be happy and um, I think, you know, even now I get down about small, insignificant things, as I'm sure everyone does. But to have that as like a, a remembrance and, and to, to know that as long as we have our health, that's all that really matters. And, you know, me and Max have been very fortunate, but we, one thing we, you know, we certainly do is enjoy ourselves. Mm. And um, I'd advise just everyone to do that because uh, we take a lot of things for granted. And, and, I, I definitely do what well, I did, and, and you know, it's an important message. So Boys, thank you so much for pleasure. stepping in at the yeah. last minute. This has been genuinely uh, amazing. Thank you very much, yeah. boys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Mind, for choosing us to partner with. Thank you, all of the speakers they've given up huge amounts of their time to come here. They are all extremely busy people. So if you can give them all a massive round of applause and thank you all for being here this evening.